Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Dark Moon Tim here. I have a bunch of awesome people got here tonight on my show. Um, before we get started, if you are watching this, to get on the Giddy app waitlist, if, you, if you're the first 20,000 downloads, um, you will get a free NFT. Also, if you click in the UCAR, if you scan the UR, uh, QR code in the corner up there, you can also get onto the Giddy waitlist app. Um, so that's something cool that you guys probably want to get on. Um, and so I'm just going to start throwing people up on the screen. I don't know who's going in and what order, but right now we have Moon Boy that just popped up and he's What's on up? the show tonight. What's going on, Moon Boy? So Tim was actually telling me a little bit about Giddy and I'm actually connecting my MetaMask right now looking at it. Uh, well, that's horrible. It's blurry, but I'm looking at Giddy right now because um, I'm very, I'm not informed, but I want to be informed. So hopefully we do talk about Giddy in this roundtable episode. We could definitely talk a little bit about Giddy and guess who also knows about Giddy? Crypto Atlas. Aha. Hello, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> What's going on, Crypto Atlas? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Are you excited? I'm excited. Good. Are you excited as Drew, who's now on? <laughs> What's going on? I mean, sorry, Generation Crypto. I shouldn't have said your real name. I hope I just didn't dox you. No, it's okay. I used my real name in the beginning of my channel. Um, oh. It's going good. I thought you were going to throw me up when you said Giddy. But, I know uh, I was going to, but I wanted to throw throw. I was a gonna, I was even gonna put on my giddy hat because I got so excited, but you know, now I can't do that. So yeah, I mean, if you guys do want to get on the wait list, Drew has a an app uh, code to scan as well, but don't use his, use mine. So <laughs> we're, we're both. The goal is we both want to beat Scott Paul and, and being number one and two spots on the wait list. That's that's the end goal. Correct, correct. And it's really cool because if you guys do get on there, you can get some really neat perks. Um, it's just for downloading it and just going through the KYC process. You don't even have to buy anything. It's just downloading the app when it comes out. It hasn't come out yet. And uh, it's a really cool project. And I think you guys will like it if you look into it. Um, all right. So if you're watching this channel, don't forget to smash that like button. Um, we're going to start talking. We're going to start things off with the first topic right now and it is this right here the safe moon exchange will it be a hit and i think the question why i'm even bringing this up right now is because there's extreme fear in the crypto market and there has been some uh hinting going on by john croning on twitter and in discord that the safe moon exchange is getting very close um i just want to hear from you guys what you think do you think it's going to just explode when it is released or you think based on the market conditions, it's going to have a slow takeoff. So um, first, I'm going to go with Moonboy on this one. So for me, I'm just waiting for the blockchain or exchange. That's what I care about. Um, I think the services like Safe Moon Connect, the products like the NFT, the wind turbines, um, all great things to fuel the ecosystem even further. But I care about two things. I invested heavily for two things, right? So if the exchange is on the way where, you know, I, I do see on Twitter that people are talking about the exchange and dropping hints. I did see Atlas. I did see um, Safe Moon Joe drop videos as well about the Safe Moon exchange that could be up and coming. So I see that there's some hype being built around the exchange, uh, the potential launch. And I think it will be great. Now, the real question for me, how does Safe Moon perform in a bear market with the products being released? Because obviously in a bull run, you're going to get massive hype. Everyone's getting tons of money when it comes to buying all these um, S coins and they have money to throw everywhere. So when safe moon pumps and people see the green candles, they can throw thousands of BNB in there. No problem at all. Right. But now we're almost in a bear market. Uh, I think I was watching Atlas's video saying that Bitcoin has closed under 30 K for the past, what, seven weeks. So yeah, seven weeks. Right. So my question is how does safe moon perform in a bear market releasing any products? And does it even matter? when it comes to the volume we're looking for, when it comes to the price action we're looking for, when it comes to the potential hype. Because if overall crypto is down, I think it will still pump. I think price action will still respond with the launch of either blockchain or exchange or something like a safe and connect. But it might not be what we thought it was. But I'm looking forward to it. Cryptonomics, put your Bitcoin, put your Ethereum, put your whatever coin you have available on the exchange, earn more of that coin. It still is a very interesting concept. So I do want to see it come to fruition. And um, I think, you know, we're looking at maybe quarter three, quarter four, based off what I'm seeing on Twitter. Um, nothing is confirmed, just throwing numbers out there, potential, right? But um, yeah, I'm excited for that. All right. Atlas, let's get your take on it. Are you excited for it? Do you think it'll be a hit based on these current conditions? What do you think? I think its initial launch is definitely going to be a hit because one of the biggest things that's holding Safe Moon back at the moment is fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? And one of those elements is the lack of delivery. We're waiting on 
12, 14 different things. Each one has its own independent value. And an exchange is a big statement. People say like, well, we would love to get SafeMoon listed on Binance. And then the SafeMoon team has kind of elaborated in the past, like you're not seeing the bigger picture here. We could have our own exchange. We kind of already do have an exchange, which is the swap, right? But if you roll out an actual exchange and you built it from the ground up and you've got the global tokenomics that's implemented in there, you've got um, cryptonomics that's being applied for all crypto, not just SafeMoon, but let's say you hold Bitcoin, you hold Ethereum, and those are earning based on trading activity that's native to the SafeMoon exchange. All that is highly incentivized. Now, what I'm concerned about is after its initial launch, how is it going to hold up from a traffic standpoint? If we look at the SafeMoon wallet when it was getting ready to launch, the website crashed and that was a huge debacle, right? That didn't leave a good impression. It was doxed, or not doxed, it was uh, DDoSed. Had a ton of traffic that flowed into it. When the SafeMoon exchange goes to launch, you got to take into account the people that are fumbling back in. You got to take into account the people that have already stayed in. And then you've also got the malicious players, the people that are being vindictive for one reason or another, because they're with another project and they're just trying to make sure that their project looks like the better competitor to SafeMoon. Uh, or it could be that they got burned on what they had with SafeMoon and they ended up selling at some point and they just have that bad taste. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to do things. I'm not saying me personally. I'm role playing here, guys. Like somebody is going to come in. Yeah, somebody is going to go in and they're going to try and just crash the website. And I've used Coinbase quite a bit. I don't know how often you guys have used it over the last couple of years, but there's been numerous times where even as big as Coinbase is, there's been critical times where there's been some major move going on with Ethereum or with Bitcoin. You go into the app and you're like, hey, I need to do a trade. And guess what? You can't because the app has crashed and they're trying to work on it. You're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. This is kind of the equivalent of what's going on with Robinhood, right? Where they halt the trading for some of the stocks. You're like, dude, I need to make some sales now, especially if you add in margin trading to an exchange and then you don't even have the capabilities of keeping the exchange up to people be able to get into their account. People get margin called. And where do you think a lot of the money goes when you get margin called? That money goes to the exchange. So it's kind of this weird predicament, right, where you're using their tool services to do things. They're trying to build trust. They are an avenue that you could use, but there are other alternatives. And ultimately, you want it to succeed as much as possible. So on its initial launch, I think there will be tons of hype. It will be a hit because it's finally one of those moments of delivery. But after its initial launch, will it crash right away? Are we going to see one of those kinds of issues? And I would hope that with the security team and them taking as much time as they are right now, they're really double, triple, quadruple, quintuple checking everything, running simulations, just to make sure that the site will stay up and it will be secure and it will function the way that it's supposed to. Awesome. Um, So one of the things that I was looking at uh, the other day were how big holders are right now in SafeMoon and about 82% of them own less than, uh, 82% of the 600,000 people own less than $250 of SafeMoon. Based on that, they're not big holders right now. Um, the same question to you, uh, Generation Crypto. Do you think that this is going to bring in a lot more money? Or you think this is what's holding people from adding to their bag? They're waiting for more releases. So do you think the SafeMoon Exchange, when it comes out, will be a hit? Uh, that is a tough question, I think. Um, if you would have asked me this three months ago, I would have probably said very confidently that I think it's going to be a massive hit. Um, but like we've talked about, you know, the current state of the market is very difficult right now. Um, SafeMoon recently listed on Mandala and there's been days where it's had, you know, two or three digit daily volume numbers on on an exchange like that. So, I mean, extremely astronomically low daily volume just on SafeMoon alone. So when the exchange does come out, um, whether that's three months from now or nine months from now, um, we could be in a completely different market at that point. It could continue to be uh, very bearish or it could kind of flip for the bull of more of a bullish uh, cycle. So I think that's going to drastically affect what we'll see when the exchange does come out. And then kind of what Alice was talking about when we first had the product launches with the wallet, um, it was not great. And I think that they hopefully will have learned from that. And when they move forward with the exchange and make sure that, you know, they've dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's so that when that launches, it launches um, 
in a way that's not going to run into a bunch of issues. And if they're able to do that and build confidence in that product, then maybe potentially it could build into something that people could trust and then put their money into. But with the recent allegations, the lawsuits, um, the lack of products recently, I think a lot of people are waiting on, are these things true? Is this lawsuit going to actually hurt the project? Is it not going to hurt the project? And then if they actually are able to release a product like the Safe Moon Exchange, is that going to kind of compete with the other exchanges that are out there or provide any additional edge to the current exchanges? And one of the things that's been talked about is the idea of tokenomics being applied broadly to cryptonomics, right? So being able to use that for Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies that you could essentially earn without having necessarily stake. Um, so if they're able to do that in a cost-effective manner where it makes sense logistically to put your money into an exchange that will do that, and it's shown that it's secure and it's shown that it's working, um, I think over time they can build up that trust and then that can become a top 10 exchange or, or, or better. Um, but at the end of the day, I think there's a lot of kind of hurdles as far as trust goes. And of course, a bad market they're going to be fighting against when that first comes out. Awesome answer. Yeah, I think my uh, main thing about the Safe Moon Exchange, I think it will be a hit if they have cryptonomics and tokenomics working on it. Um, if it is one of those things, if they release the exchange itself and it's just like any other exchange without the tokenomics and the cryptonomics within the exchange, I think that is going to slow down its explosion if that's what they were going for. If they do launch with tokenomics, which is something I'm hoping they launch with, um, I think it's going to be uh, what a lot of people want in an exchange just to hold on there and gain more of their token without having to go into the whole staking pool and stuff like that. But I, I assume with tokenomics and cryptonomics, it's only going to be based on volume. So if the volume is low and you can't get a lot of people on the exchange because there's a lot of fear in the market, I don't think there's going to be a huge turnout uh, for the exchange. So hopefully the market will turn around a little bit and uh, it'll turn back into the you know buying market, the bullish market. Um, then when they release it, if they have tokenomics and cryptonomics within the exchange, I think it will do very well. Um, if they ex if they release it without that kind of stuff in this kind of market, I don't think it'll take off like they hope so. Um, and I, I agree with you, uh, Generation. There are some things they need to pan out before people could build their trust back into the project itself. But if they do release something, and this this being that something, and it does work really well, and they do have all the things that people expect it to have, I think uh, it'll do really well if the market turns around into a bullish market. All right, so hey, now Tim, we're going to move... Yeah, Go I'm ahead. sorry. Can I just add something to that? Um, yeah, I just sure. feel like we're at the point now where I, I just want to see when to release something. And I'm right. not a when boy. I'm not a when buy and ask. I don't care about when, right? But it's, it's a fact that we've been on the market for over a year. We have the wallet release, but the person who released that wallet is no longer with SafeMoon. So right. it, it it's almost like SafeMoon does have a little bit to prove. Um, and it's not that we aren't confident. It's not that we aren't long-term bullish. Is that a lot of things were said and nothing has really manifested as of yet. So just an environment where we really want to see something at this point. Um, the exchange, I don't expect it to be perfect day one. I just want it to be available for, for trading purposes and you can store your crypto on there. And I'm sure they're going to roll out um, updates over time as they did with a safe one wallet. So it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be the most prettiest um, UI or overlay. It just needs to be available, functional. People can use it. Um, very minimal bugs. And like Atlas said before, I'm sure they're going to have issues with crashing Coinbase as big as they are. Every single time Bitcoin and Ethereum pumps, every single time Coinbase crash for whatever reason, a volume, the amount of users, um, the amount of trading on the platform, it just can't handle those numbers. So we could expect something from SafeMoon, but obviously we just need to be patient with it being a new piece of software. So I'm just in the mindset of, I just want something to happen. And, um, Hopefully that's sooner rather than later. Is it? I'd like to ask, um, would you rather the exchange launch where it has the cryptonomics across the board with all of the tokens that we see that are part of the SafeMoon swap right now or wait until they actually get the functionality support for Bitcoin? Because obviously so, Bitcoin's the big boy, but which would you rather have? Right. So tokenomics is something that's currently going on, right? So, and I feel like right now tokenomic tokens aren't, giving the best passive income when you're when you're talking about what can I earn passive income from? I, I don't see a lot of people getting rich off tokenomic tokens. Um, so the big thing would be to have like a blue chip coin with cryptonomics. And I think that's something they would really need to have 
to make them stand out um, when they release the exchange. Because I mean, to get that that is the big draw, right? To get your Bitcoin on there and to get the cryptonomics on it, right? To get your Ethereum, to get the cryptonomics on it, um, because those cryptonomics they might help you pay for some of those ridiculous gas fees that you're paying on the Ethereum network. So if, you, if there's a lot of volume going on, um, the exchange would be successful if it had those things integrated into it. And I, I fear that if they don't have those, even though I like the design of the UI, I, 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 so I don't know if you guys seen the, the photos that they released of the UI, it does look slick. I really like their new designs that they're laying out and stuff, but looks don't matter if it doesn't function like, like it should. So if they don't have the things that make it special, um, they're obviously going to get a lot of people from the army to go to it if they release it. But I think they really need that cryptonomic aspect aspect when they release the exchange to be, to get people to move off another exchange onto it and make it easy on and off with your onboarding and offboarding with your fiat currency. And if they do that, I think they might have something good, but if it, if it's hard to, if it's the process is hard, then they might have a little bit of trouble until they iron that out. And um, I, I agree with you on that. Um, you know, they do have chain link, right? That is part of the safety swap. That is a blue chip. There's also Ethereum, which is a blue chip. But most notably, Bitcoin is the biggest crypto that's out there. The fact that it's still not part of the safe moon swap, I can only be led to assume it's because they haven't gotten the cross chain swap functionality figured out yet. Um, but would it be OK for them to launch an exchange without having Bitcoin as a support inside of that exchange? That's a great question. I don't know. What do you think, Generation? Do you think it would be okay to release it without Bitcoin support? Um, I think that it would be uh, – the reality of the exchange is the biggest thing that matters, in my opinion, out of anything is volume, right? I think right. if there is a ton of volume on the exchange, people will trade whatever coins they're going to trade if they're going to make money. That's what that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. People are there to make money. So if there's you know millions or potentially billions of dollars in volume on a daily basis through all the different coins they offer – and you're able to gain a lot from the cryptonomic structure, I don't think it quite matters what coins or tokens are on there because people are going to want to be on there to make money regardless of what token or coin it is. Obviously, coins like Bitcoin being the biggest and the most notable and the original obviously are going to help get you those volume numbers because people are going to most likely want to trade in Bitcoin as it's the most well-known cryptocurrency on market. Um, so I think that helps you get to that number. But regardless of if there is Bitcoin or if there's not, if they do not get high levels of volume, the cryptonomics is completely useless. And then you're putting your, you're basically paying high fees to get your tokens or coins into an exchange. That's going to take you potentially months or years to even make back the money that you paid to put it in. And then let alone try to get out of it again. Um, so the volume is going to be the very big key factor there. That's why I mentioned before, they're on kind of an uphill battle right now because, you know, Mandala exchange, although I know it's not listed in the United States and their places, but having, you know, $17, or $250 in daily volume, that's abysmal. You know, that's one trade uh, in volume or, or, you know, and it's so people make bigger trades than on a daily basis and like every in, in, in shit coins. Right. So um, it, it's concerning to see those levels of daily volume on a, on an exchange like that. So hopefully that doesn't continue to be an issue in the future. Otherwise the entire cryptonomic kind of model falls apart and collapses in on itself. Yeah. I uh, have a quick question. Do you guys know if, um, if they actually charge the ten percent tax on their exchange, um, that's one of the. So people said that the exchange would. Are, are you talking about the Dex right now or the centralized exchange? The centralized exchange. So the idea, from what I heard originally, is that there was going to be a five percent and a five percent out, five percent in and a five percent out. But no one really knows. Other people have already told me that it's based on the exchange's fees. So like when you're in Coinbase and you're doing buying and selling and stuff on Coinbase, you have to pay a Coinbase fee, right? They're saying that a percentage of the Coinbase fee will go into doing the cryptonomics for the uh, tokens that you're holding um, in the SafeMoon exchange. I'm not sure. No one really knows right now how the dynamics of it are going to work. Um, but I believe a fee, if someone's trying to move over $100,000 worth of Bitcoin, they're immediately losing $10,000 or $5,000 right off the bat. Who knows how long that'll take to make that back up? That might be a little too steep for people to, to uh, you know, ape into the exchange with all their Bitcoin. So that's just my thought on the whole thing. But now let's move on because we have a lot of different topics to go over. We're going to go over this. I know you guys are super excited about the Safe Moon Space Capsule Capsule merch box, number one. 
And my question to you, just easily, it's an, it's an amazing low price of $250 with around $100 shipping, but I heard they brought that down to $59 shipping internationally. Are you buying it? So first we're gonna go to Crypto Atlas. Are you buying the Safe Moon Space Capsule merch box number one? No, and I'm not. I mean, just very simply, I'm not. It's way too much money for me, especially given the circumstances of where we are in the market right now. My whole portfolio is down. It's not just Safe Moon. It's Bitcoin. It's every crypto project. I'm at a point right now where if I'm wanting to spend money on something, no offense to the Safe Moon team, but I would rather spend it on an investment. So either buying more Safe Moon or buying Bitcoin or buying something like that, because this is the time when you buy those things. Um, I think the timing that they have with this is really just kind of odd. I understand that they're trying to make a package deal and this is just kind of the first step of everything, but I think most people are going to want to go in and buy an independent piece, just the hat or just the stickers. And I know those things will come, but them kind of saying like, Hey guys, guess what? We haven't been doing merch for several months. Now we're doing it again. But the only option you have is this really overpriced package of this thing. Well, when I say overpriced, I mean because of how much it costs for everything together. If you really break down how many different independent items that are in there, you're like, okay, I can kind of understand the price a little bit better now, but you mentioned it. You still got to pay a ton in shipping. And I'm just, it's a big, big no for me. Yeah. Um, I, I think that is spot on. I actually did a poll on Twitter. Um, I almost have a thousand people or 2000 people that responded to it. And 88% of people said they will not be buying it. It's too expensive. Um, they would rather put the money in SafeMoon itself than spend it on the merchandise itself. There is some pretty cool merchandise in the box. Um, I already think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you, Moon Boy, are you buying the merch box? The merch box is stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why Why would I? Oh, so I want to support Safe Moon, but I want to support it in an environment where it completes its roadmap. This merch box is a really cool addition to a project that has its foundation built. Safe Moon doesn't have its foundation yet. Maybe you can call the community its foundation, which that's a very good point as well. But why am I going to invest into a merch box? I already invested quite a bit of money. Um, I trade safe moon. People know that I sell my bags, buy my bags. That big pump we had last week, bought that bottom, sold that top. I do a lot of that. So you're getting a lot of my 10% in and out. You're getting my reflections. Um, that's going back into LP. That's going back into other holders' pockets. Um, and I'm getting whatever I get when it comes to the difference of price. But I'm just in an environment where, like I said before, I want safe moon to release something that is worthy when it comes to utility, when it comes to functionality, when it comes to a project or a, a product like the wallet that I can use, that I can store my crypto, trade my crypto, that I can be more excited about. Merch, it, it doesn't get me out of bed. It's something anyone can do. And I get that it's Safe Moon specific merch, but I have a Safe Moon shirt. Tim has a Safe Moon hoodie. I have Safe Moon merch right now. I went on Amazon, not promoting anything. I just typed in Safe Moon. I bought a couple shirts. I bought a hat. I have merch right now. It cost me 30 bucks for like two shirts. I have merch. Um, I am not interested at all in the merch, and it doesn't do anything for me. Um, it's just I don't care for it. But it's there. It's supported if you want to. I'm not yeah. waiting for the merch. I'm waiting for the exchange of blockchain. That's me. Yeah, I, I, I will answer because I already know what uh, Generation Crypto's answer is. He will not admit it but he has already purchased it. Um, <laughs> so so everyone knows he's going to say, no, he won't buy it. No, he didn't buy it. I know secretly he purchased five of them, one for each of his family members and everything. So he's super excited about that merch box. Um, yeah, I think it's a little overpriced myself. Uh, although I did buy this. This is actually one of the original hoodies from when you had to buy them over in the UK. And I paid like, I think it was 80 bucks and you're a, I hope my wife's not listening or you're just going to see a remote come flying at my face. Um, and it ended up costing me, me like a hundred bucks overall oh, with wow. all this. Yeah. So it, it cost a lot. And, but that was way early on. Uh, I'm talking May, like when they first released the merch, I was super excited by it. Um, so I was like, if anything ever comes out, I might just get a hat cause I like hats. Um, but when I saw the whole box itself, I was like, well, I can already have the hoodie. Uh, I don't think I'm going to dive into that yet. You're going to wear um, a hat to, to, to cover up your wig? Yeah, my, wig, my wig. You like no, that? No, don't cover it up, man. Looks good. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, good question. So, 
Does the sale of these boxes, does it help at all with liquidity, reflection? I was just about to ask this. I yeah. was waiting for the right time. I was like, how much of this sale is going to just yeah. them as a company? Is any of it going to be used yeah. to buy back or any of the stuff you're talking about? I exactly. have not heard that any of it's going into the ecosystem for anything whatsoever. So they're pocketing all this money. Is that what they're well, doing? Well, I mean, every, some, some people were saying that they're making out about $100 a box. Who really knows? It's all eco-friendly products, so it might cost a little bit more. Who knows? I know, I know. Well, let's just move on to the next topic because I already answered it for you, Generation. You were buying yeah, it and I already you, know. You don't it. want me to talk on this subject. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now we're going over to the SafeMoon 32 LP buyback and your thoughts on the whole process of them taking the BNB from V1 and buying into uh, V2. They bought a whole ton of tokens. Uh, I talked to John. I said, hey, John, you going to burn those tokens? And they, he said, no, I'm not going to burn those tokens. We're going to take them. We might use them for something in the future. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on that. Generation, I'm going to let you take this because I didn't let you answer the merch box question. Uh, what is your thought on the whole safe moon? I mean, tell me about that experience when you saw all those 32, uh, you know, B&B &B buys and you saw the 332,033, you know, all those 32s going on uh, deck screener. Tell me all about that. I was going to say, as I recall, I think me and you were there both watching it together. As We were on the phone, were yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had um, made a nice buy-in and I was like, come on, keep going. I'm going to sell some. Just, you know what I mean? You got to, I had to, I had to run it. And you did. And you did well on that too. I so, did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So obviously um, people may have noticed because of my lack of content recently and we're, we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty here. Um, there's been a lot going on with statement. I just don't condone anymore. And, and that's just, this is one of those things, right? So you've got a buyback from the V1 LP. They're now keeping those tokens. They have a terrible track record with the V1 to V2 migration with the other things that are still in question that have yet to be addressed. Um, now you've got even more tokens being held by a company, um, that they basically, you know, got rid of unpaired and now keep a large sum of V2 tokens that they don't really have an answer for as to what it's going to exactly go towards. They mentioned it's not going to be burned. They have other things that they would like to do with it, but no exact answers is what that's going to be used for. So you've got even more funds that are now set aside by a company that already has, uh, for lack of a better terms, or to put it as nicely as I can, um, a very shady past that has yet to be addressed. Tim, um, can, can you launch Generation? He's fighting right now. Launch it. Oh, you're <laughs> launched. Launch yeah, get me out of here. Yeah, All right, I'm sorry. Here. Generation, we launched you. You're gone. <laughs> yes. He's out, out of here. here. You futter. Nonsense. Futter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to Crypto Atlas. You're where were we, I didn't actually even talk to you about this whole thing. I didn't know anything. Uh, I didn't know if you bought into it and, and you and you you know try to ride the wave a little bit. Um, what was your thoughts on the whole uh, SafeMoon 32 LP buyback and the fact that they're keeping the tokens and they're not burning them? What's your thoughts on this? I did not buy in more, but I also haven't sold anything still up to this point. I've just been riding the wave with everything, and you know. You guys know it's been pretty frustrating for me because of how much I've pulled down and my value over time. Um, but I think it's an incredible thing what they're doing. The fact that there's only one third of this that's actually been moved over, another two thirds that can be sent over. And the question is kind of like, when is that going to be taking place? So we saw how significant of a price increase it was that took place during that first one third. We are at a point right now where the Bitcoin fear and greed index is at basically historic lows. It's extreme fear that's going on. We're seeing with safe moon volume. We were just talking about this a little bit ago. Mandala exchange is an example of that $17, roughly around $350. But in my video, I actually broke it down. I looked at the decentralized exchanges as well. It wasn't just Mandala exchange, just overall, the volume wasn't even half of a million dollars over the 24 hour time span. So we're talking about, the fact that so many people are so fearful that you reach a critical point and then you have a reversal and things start to enter into a bear, uh, into a bull run, right? People start getting more confidence. They want to ride those waves. People start doing tons of leverage and people are just popping off, making lots of money. People are more bullish on their news and what they're talking about. People are celebrating other people. They FOMO in because they don't want to miss out on these things too. So we still have two thirds of this that can help ride that wave. And in addition to it, just like what John Crony, the CEO, is saying, every day that passes by is one day closer to the SafeMoon exchange. That same statement can be said for any of the other things that SafeMoon's working on. 
whether it be stuff with Operation Phoenix, if that stuff does pan out to any regard, or if it's with the cross-chain swap, or if it's with uh, Swap and Evolve, if it's with the hard wallet, if they end up doing that at some point. You know, there's so many things that is still a possibility, whether it be completely scrapped, started over again, et cetera. But every day that passes by is one step closer that's to those things. So seeing this take place, how dramatic it was, there was also a huge sell-off that took place afterwards, right? Rode up and then it essentially pulled right back down. That should be expected. And I think that when this happens again, the chances of it having as significant of a pullback is very minimal if it's an unexpected thing, right? If they give everyone a heads up that they're getting ready to do this again, then of course, people are going to be trying to time the market. People are going to be like, I'm going to get in. I'm going to get out at this top. Like people are going to play that game. But if they just do it out of the blue, nobody knows. Maybe it's two o'clock in the morning for us, right? You're asleep. You didn't know it's going to happen. You wake up and it's like, well, if people did try to time the market, it's because they're always staring at the price all the time. And so that's part of the name of the game with all this stuff too. I think there's a lot of possibility that the next time this happens, we'll see less of a pullback, less people selling off because right now, you got some people, they're just trying to break even or they have a certain goal in mind. They're saying, hey, if it hits this, then I'm out because they're frustrated for X, Y, Z reasons. Coffeezilla's video, the court case stuff, the lack of deliveries, right? Those are just three different examples. But the people that are still in, the people like myself who still haven't sold anything, you got a nice little pump going up. It pulls back and it's now at a higher point than where it was for the last time it pulled back. You start to say, all right, we still got another third left to go. Plus what happens when you have all those deliveries and everything else. Yeah. One of the things that I think what a lot of people are saying is that there's another third, did you say, or two thirds? Two thirds are left. Yeah. So you got to understand that they did say, and and who knows if they're going to do this, that out of that mount that they have left, they have to, they said they were going to reimburse people that got burned when they were doing the V1 to V2 migration. Now, that was something that Ryan said before he left. I think John did address it. They weren't exactly sure how they were going to do that, but that is something they said they were planning on doing. Um, so there is probably about $6 million of that that's going to go back to the people who lost it when they are trying to do the transfer over from V1 to V2. So I don't really think there is another two-thirds that they're going to use to buy back because I think they're going to have to save that to make right on the people that lost their bags when they are moving over from V1 to V2. So I think based on the amount that they have left, I don't know exactly how much they have left. Um, but I would say that there's probably only like a third left for that to happen. Cause I did hear that from a lot of people. Oh, there's still two thirds. There's still two thirds, but no one was talking about the V one people who lost their bags. Um, and safe moon has to make them whole again. So let's get out of here, cat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. Now, do you want to answer this moon boy or should we go on to the next one? Cause I know we beat the hell out of that, but if you want to go on it and say your thoughts on it, feel free. Feel free. Do you want to talk about get down, cat? <laughs> Just a question. <laughs> uh, do you, um, how did they access the liquidity? Isn't V one supposed to be locked? Uh, I heard it was. I don't know how they. How, how did know. they get the B and B out of there to even do this? You tickle it from underneath <laughs> like this, and the B and B okay. falls out. Um, <laughs> damn it, cat! I apologize for the feline. <laughs> the the uh, so the only thing I have to add is that instead of buying safe moon on the open market and doing the, I get the 32 is a meme. Why not just inject that directly no. back into the liquidity pool to offset volatility? I get it. Like you want to make the price go up, but the liquidity is not going up with the price action, which means people's bag value will increase, which means when they dump is going to have an even bigger effect on the charts. So I get it. Price action is great, but why not support the liquidity pool more than what it is right now? What do we have? $6 million in liquidity. If everyone tries to sell, not everyone can get their money. So I just rather them support the project more by beefing that liquidity up a little bit, which is going to help volatility overall, and it's going to give more value to the project. But that's all I have to add. Okay, cool. All right. Well, here is the final safe moon thing. Um, who will moon first, Safe Moon or Luna? And uh, I don't know if you guys have been riding the Luna train, right? Be and became little lunatics. 
Um, a lot of people have seen the crash of Luna, which is tragic for the people that had large amounts of holding in it. But uh, for the giant crash, a lot of people were taking advantage of the very low price of Luna itself and were just aping into the project when it was super low, like a millionth or quadrillionth of a penny. Um, so who do you think will moon first? And I'm going to go with you, Moon Boy. Do you think Safe Moon is going to moon before Luna or is Luna just going to take off? Luna to the moon. Let's go. Luna, so you think Luna? Hey, Luna's kind of wild, right? Because so they were originally going to burn tokens. They're not going to do that. They're going to actually fork the blockchain. Forking the blockchain and calling the current Luna token Terra Classic, kind of like Ethereum Classic. And now we're going to have the new Luna token, kind of what the new Ethereum is. And they're just going to continue the project without the UST stable coin. They might bring another stable coin that's actually pegged one to one with actual dollars in the bank. I'm not sure. But there might be a play there to make. I'm not telling people what to do, but let's say if Luna does run back up to its $119 all time high again, and this thing, the new fork project wants on the market at what, five bucks? Um, previously, I think mm -hmm. the circling supply for Luna was 280 million. So, I guess maybe 10 bucks because they have to start at about 1.5 billion in market cap. That might be an interesting play to make. By Luna now, it runs back up to over 100 bucks. You caught it at five bucks on launch of the new fork project. Thus, you're sitting large. That might be a play. I'm not saying to do that. I'm going to pick up a little bag when I do see it dropping. Um, but yeah, I like to diversify. I think Luna is interesting because it got a lot of attention. My dad, who doesn't know anything about crypto, he's never invested in his life. He asked me about Luna because he saw it on the news. Hey, son, aren't you into that crypto thing? Didn't you lose money last year? I, I heard something about Luna. What's going on there? He asked me about crypto. I'm like, how did you hear about Luna? If my dad's hearing about it, it is popular. So I think there's some hype there when this blockchain launches. And I want to ride that hype if there's any interesting price action out of it. So Luna, short term, I think there might be money, not financial advice. All right. Wow, that was a great answer. Um, how about you, Crypto Atlas? Who do you think is going to moon first, Safe Moon or Luna? I'm leaning more towards Luna right now. A lot of the focus in the community spaces and in the news is on Luna, unless SafeMoon does do some sort of delivery in the near future, which I don't think that's going to be taking place. The exchange still sounds like it's probably several months away. Uh, the little things like the cross chain, the swap and evolve, those are nice touch ups. Don't get me wrong, but nothing is as big of a statement as saying like, hey, we're an exchange. We're going to compete with Binance. We're going to compete with Crypto.com. Like those are the kinds of statements that really stands out, right? So with Luna, everyone's trying to look at the situation and say, well, what are they going to do to try and remedy the situation? Are they going to do some massive token buyback, sell-off, staking? Like what exactly can they do, if anything, that could dramatically increase the price? From its low point up until uh, the other day when it started to make a significant rise, it went up about 40,000%. So as much as it sucks for people like Binance, I mean, I don't feel as bad because they're an exchange, but Binance lost, I think it was $1.6 billion and went down to $3,000 of their holdings in Luna. Think about that. All in the course of just a short time span. But at the same time, as many people that lost out a lot on that project, the exact same project, and this is like the first time that we've ever seen this, where project basically went down to zero and then rebounded back up and had such a high percentage increase. People that got into the very bottom that said, hey, I'm still going to take a risk on this project, just whatever, 40,000% increase. There's so much value potential from there with where its price is that realistically, I think the biggest thing that's holding it back from trying to make these... Uh, exponential increases is the amount of tokens in the supply and with the whole debacle that happened if they can find a remedy solution that essentially collapses that down a ton then the whole feasibility of each token having more value is definitely in play there so there's all these different conversations what they're trying to look to do and this and that if they can get something in the near future we could see another forty thousand percent plus increase which would be absolutely incredible if they can figure it out but if I'd say if uh, two to three weeks goes by, people are already going to have forgotten about Luna at that point in time. They're going to be looking at other projects. And then it's just kind of like, well, if it happens, it happens. How about you, Generation Crypto? Do you think uh, that which one do you think is going to moon first, Safe hold Moon on, or Luna? Um, so sorry, there's an argument right now in the um, comment section. I just got to address it. Guys, 
if you want to support Atlas, support Atlas. You don't have to argue with him if you don't want to buy his NFTs, right? He's an artist. He's offering a service. Just like other crypto projects, they have their NFTs. What the value is, what the value is. But nobody has to buy anything, all right? You right. don't have to buy a shirt, a hoodie, an NFT, a cup of coffee. You buy these products and services to either support the company, support the individual, or just because you want to consume it. No one's forcing you. It's not like he has your seed phrase and say, I'm going to spend your safe moon for you to buy my NFT. It is an option. And people have bought his NFTs and no one has complained. I've never heard of anyone complaining who bought Atlas's NFTs. Have you seen them? They're actually pretty cool. Whether you think they're going to thousand X or whatever else, it's, it's, it's irrelevant to if you want to support him. Someone in the comments said, what if I buy your NFT in that 1.2 million of safe moon moons you scam me how is that a scam you buy a cup of coffee with your safe moon your safe moon is now higher value did the starbucks company scam you because you bought your co coffee at a lower point of what safe moon's valued at you you got you guys are ridiculous stupid stupid okay <laughs> we are privileged to have the option and freedom to do what we want and put our money where we want to put it and spend it on what we want to spend it on that's freedom enjoy that as you have your freedom, other people have the same freedom to support Atlas. I support him. We all support him. Absolutely. And his viewers support him. Support him via his Patreon. Support him via his membership. Have you seen his Patreon? He has supporters who enjoy what he does. And he offers a very good service with his content and coverage. If you people don't want to buy the NFTs, you don't have to buy the NFTs. Okay? I see you in the comments being very dumb and stupid. And it's annoying. <laughs> And it's like, it's, it's, you are not forced to buy. What are you arguing about? So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. I, I, okay. I just, I wanted to say real quick, first off, thank you very much for defending me. A lot of times I feel like I'm kind of left on my own, um, to be honest with this stuff. I'm proud of my art. I am an artist. I'm not just a YouTuber. I'm, I make manga. I've made music before. I did a music video. Like I also do digital art and I'm still doing content on YouTube. I'm still growing. And I have a project I've been working on in the back end that I should hopefully, if everything pans out right, I should finally be able to make the announcement on this on Friday. I didn't even tell you guys about this yet, but I've been having the conversations in the back end. Um, with the reference to the coffee, the only difference that's there, I would say, you drink a cup of coffee and it's gone. You buy one of my NFTs. Let's say you buy the latest one I have, which is 1 million safe moon. 1 million safe moon is what, like 450 bucks right now? One of my last pieces that sold, sold for like $1,400 at current market value during that time. In SafeMoon, somebody was willing to buy it then. So people saying that my stuff is overvalued and stuff. This newest piece, which is worth more SafeMoon than what the last piece sold for, is worth less than dollars right now. And you have resell value. I don't think these people really understand how NFTs even work. You buy my NFT, you can resell it. How much was it bought for initially? That's part of the blockchain. That's what people do is they buy art and they resell it oftentimes. So as I continue to grow, you can see that I haven't quit my YouTube channel. I haven't stopped making art. I haven't stopped doing these other things. It's up to the value of the independent person what they see that value is, right? If they buy it for a million safe moon, safe moon goes back up. Hey, great. Maybe you sell it for a million safe moon. Maybe you sell it for 500,000 safe moon. But in dollar value, how much did you spend in safe moon at that time? $450? If SafeMoon went 3x times right now, do you think that you really need to sell my same NFT if you wanted to for a million SafeMoon? Maybe sell it for half that, for 500,000 SafeMoon. But now you made more in dollar value than what you had before, right? So it's all dictated on market demand. I didn't have to sell it for SafeMoon. And I appreciate you defending me on this, but it's just so ridiculous that people yeah, you know, think no, that as art, it has to have a use case. It's an NFT. There are NFTs that have use cases, and you should be finding out more information hopefully soon when I can make my announcements on this other stuff. But, like, give me a break. And now Carlos I'll, I'll talking, give you a break. Um, you know, Carlos is over here talking about how, you know, his it's overpriced or whatever. It sounds like you don't have a big bag of safety, my boy, so maybe you should look at your own investing and focus on your own bags. Uh, people talk about I like to just do videos for clicks. Of course I do. I'm a YouTuber. I want views. Look at my channel. I'm doing nothing but Luna videos because of all the hype. Obviously, I want clicks. I'm a YouTuber. Why would I be doing YouTube? You think I just want 50 views on my videos? Of course, it's I do. for clicks. 
You want 50 views? Well, I'll give I you want, 50 I views. want 50 plus views. I mean, let's let's keep going. Oh, if, you, if you're here and you didn't smash that like button, smash it. It's all for the healthy algorithm of YouTube while we're talking about videos and clicks. But yeah, guys, we, we're, we're all YouTubers. We all try our best to give you the best content we can um, to keep you entertained, to give you something to watch. And in all honesty, we don't get paid a lot doing our videos. So um, most of us still have to hold down jobs. Um, so please support us when you can. And uh, if you if you don't want to click on our videos because you think they're clickbait or whatever, don't click on them. I'm sorry, um, yeah, sorry, sorry that that pulled away for, from the stream. Yeah, so, yeah I was just going to say sorry for all that. Sorry that I... Um, turn into an Anna Bergman right there. I just, you know, I, I, I see people ripping the hot list in the chat. I'm like, you guys are stupid. Very horrible argument. If you want to argue, why don't you join us on a stream one day? I'll invite you on my channel if you want to debate. Who's this, Carlos? I'll bring you on board. We can talk. Okay, <laughs> Carlos, just... enough being a little stinker. Stinker. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, love, I was going to ask you this question. Uh, generation but we don't have a lot of time so we're going to go on to the uh warning it's not safe moon related topic and we have a new section of this show it's called buy it or deny it and uh, the first one is stronger token at 14 dollars and 11 cents right now are you going to be buying this or would you recommend someone buy this i just want to go around the tape around the the horn here i would say 14 dollars and 11 cents for a stronger token I do think the project in the future is going to be very strong. Um, $14.11, I think it might go lower. So I think you should hold off for just a little bit longer. How about you, Generation Crypto? Uh, so for starters, I just the style of my channel, I do not ever offer financial advice or say whether it's a buy or sell. Oh, yeah, this is not price. financial advice. Hold on, yeah. let me put that up there. <laughs> None of this is financial advice. Yeah. So it, it, with that being said, so I'm not going to comment on whether buy or sell just because I have a strong and strict standard on my channel to never say either direction on anything. Um, however, talking about kind of where strong is, where it's been, um, I think personally, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed where the price action is now. But I do believe in the overall vision that strong is trying to produce with their blockchain and the future utility that blockchain will provide as far as making a blockchain as a service to other blockchains. So I, I, I think that they have a lot of kind of future of value and what they're trying to achieve. Uh, but I agree, you know, the price action is pretty negative right now. And I can understand why there has been a lot of concern with that price action, especially because if you're trying to build nodes right now, that cost to be able to maintain those nodes is getting dangerously close to the point where it's no longer even profitable. Um, so there is that kind of, I guess, short-term concern for a lot of people right now. But I do believe that if they're able to achieve what they want to on chain, that in the long term, um, I think it could potentially become a great project, but I wouldn't say either direction on whether it's a good time to buy or not. Um, do your own research and come to your own conclusions. All right. Um, the next non-financial advice question to Crypto um, Atlas is, Drip at 1581, buy it or deny it, not financial advice. But what do you think? Do you think it's going to hold its value? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Just your thoughts, buy it or deny it, not financial advice. Yeah, not financial advice, but you know what's funny, Tim, is it's not $15.81 right now. It's $19.70. Oh, it's we'll gone, see that. It's, it's just gone went up almost $4. $4. It went up almost $4 since whenever you prepared this for the Which was the at 8 o'clock, so. Yeah, so I think that kind of makes a statement on its own without me having to say too much. But I think that um, to just elaborate a little bit more on it, Forex Shark is doing lots of AMAs, lots of different channels. This is an opportunity where different people can ask various questions or some of the same questions. But audience, there's lots of avenues of information that's out there. And people that have concerns, et cetera, they can express themselves. They can raise these things up. Many of these things have already been addressed. So the biggest question is, what are they trying to do to be leading forward, to be innovative, to create more use case, to cause more demand, those kinds of things? And the lending system that's being discussed, the peer-to-peer -peer essentially lending system is going to be an absolutely incredible game changer. And that is going to be used against people's uh, drip inside of their faucet, right? So when you look at that, there's an opportunity that is coming up in the near future. It sounds like that is something just by that in itself that would come out before the end of the year that essentially takes off the selling pressure for people that would say, I would normally go sell my drip so that I have the funds to go do these other things, they don't have to do that at that point in time. So if you take away selling pressure and you create lots of avenues to do that, what do you think happens with supply and demand, 
right? What, what do you think happens with the price itself? More users are more likely to come in. So you got more demand in that regard. The price starts to go up because there's less selling pressure. More people FOMO in because of the other aspects, the other partnerships that they're developing. I mean, $19.70 today or $15.81 earlier eight today. Yeah, it went earlier up today. Yeah. It was $191 earlier this year. Forex Shark has talked about it saying that, you know, projections by the end of the year in the thousands based on market analysis research. You look at compar comparative uh, companies and projects of what they're doing. And then you look at what Drip's model is and what they've adjusted in that system. You hear Forex Shark talk. He's a very analytical individual. He's very intelligent with this. So the buying price, this is significantly lower than many of the other price points that we've had earlier in the year. So if anybody is not already in drip or wanted to add to their position, what do you guys think? Does it sound like a good buying opportunity? People are looking for projects that have been around a little bit longer on top of everything else, right? You try and get on one of these new things. You're thinking, oh, it's already gone down to near zero. Should I be buying that dip or should I be buying the blue chips? Or should I... a lot of people shift their focus to those. This project has been out over a year now. So the idea of it sustaining for another year or two years is higher than another project that launched two months ago that's already pulled back as much percentage-wise as what Drip has done or more, right? So where do you put your money when you want to buy those dips before they go up? This is one of those projects that has my attention every single day. Tim, launch us, Futter. It's talking about Drip's a Ponzi. Get him out here. Oh, you <laughs> son of a... Launch hey, Safeboon here. Joe's here. What's, yeah, going, what's going on, on everybody? How's it going? Oh, <laughs> We're, it's going good. You missed the whole beginning show where we talked about Safe Moon, and Safe Moon Joe wasn't even here. So yeah, um, like an hour. <laughs> yeah, we, we spent a good hour well, on it. Good time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is our non-financial advice: uh, buy it or deny it section. <laughs> you think it's going to go higher or lower? And I'm just going to throw this at you, um, Moon Boy, and then I'm going to go to Joe uh, Seifu. At 48.49 right now, do you think it's going to go lower? Do you think it's going to stay around this price? Um, are you invested in it? I mean, you don't even have to tell me if you don't want to, but what do you think about Seifu? So I was invested into Seifu, and I dumped right before the CoffeeZilla right. video because I like to protect my capital to buy back in lower to increase my back size. People have a problem with this. This is smart trading, right? Why right. would I hold my bag knowing it's going to drop? I knew the copper zilla was going to drop it. I knew it was going to drop, buy back lower, triple my position, right? Now, I did not buy back in. So I'm not going to talk bad about Seifu or any project. I just don't see the utility right now. I, you know, right now, the incentivize, uh, you are incentivized to hold based off of the rebases, and you are earning 383,000%. Hmm. Um, APY for the first year. After the first year, it will drop. As of right now, there's no external money coming in. It's just new buyers coming in and people who are selling other protocol that's going to contribute more to their tax. And hey, that's 99% of DeFi. I'm not knocking Seifu. 99% of DeFi is ran on Ponzi-nomics. Most likely, you are in a project that has this very same Ponzi-nomic type structure to where it needs new money it doesn't have any services provided yet. It doesn't have any new capital coming from, um, let's say, other types of funding. It's just more holders, more users, people buying the dip. So I can only look at Seifu and look at the price action of similar tokens like Titano and see what's happened to Titano over the past couple, seven months now because it's been out for about seven, eight months. Titano is what, at one cent? All-time high was at 27 cents, and it's just dropping and dropping and dropping because... People have earned so many of those rebases. They've earned so much of the token that they can now take profits and earn a little bit. And the sell pressure is higher than the buy pressure. And there's nothing else Titano can do currently that's helping with that. They just launched a swap. It's a very nice swap. They do have a play to earn game in the works. And no safe food does have things in the works as well. Their blockchain airline service, they have a couple of things that will be coming that's going to most likely help that. But when we talk about right now, I see more downwards action for Seifu. So I think 28 bucks, not financial advice, um, but I think it's a good price point. Um, will it go down lower? I think it will. And that's my opinion. 
Good. Yeah. I, I mean, this is all just opinion, guys. It's not financial advice. I want to throw this out there again. But it is a cool thing to talk about because I don't think a lot of people just talk about what if they think the price is going to go lower or higher because they're <laughs> scared. But let's not be scared tonight. And Safe Moon Joe is not going to be scared to tell me if he is buying no. Bitcoin at $30,000 or if he thinks it's going to keep going. Is you going to think it's think it's going to drop even more? Do you think it's a good buy right now at $30,000? And by the way, not financial advice, but do you think it's a good buy at $30,000? So I, I think Bitcoin's always a good buy. It's always a safe buy. <laughs> as far as crypto, if you believe anything in crypto, Bitcoin's always a good buy. As far as that, I don't own any Bitcoin. I'm not looking to buy any Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, I think it's great. But I think those that really made that life changing money got in Bitcoin forever ago. If you buy it now, let's say it hits $150,000 and you buy like 100 bucks in. You'll make like 500 bucks, but let's be honest, 500 bucks is nothing compared to the person who owns multiple Bitcoins that's going to make more money. So that's why I'm personally not into it. It's more of a safer bet, which is good, but I like, I like you know, high risk, high reward, and that high reward is life changing money. So that's what I like more I'm excited about. That's what I care about. So that's what I'm going to get involved in, basically. All right. So everyone yeah. likes the blue chip, uh, not financial advice on that section. But the, yeah, that was a really quick section of buy it or deny it. It was a new... Uh, section that I just made. But uh, my next question to the panel is, when will the crypto market turn bullish? Um, do you guys think it's going to turn bullish this summer? A lot of people have been saying that they think it's going to start exploding this summer. Some people told me it's going to happen in December. Some people told me it's not going to happen for a couple of years. I just want to get your opinion on when you guys think the market is going to turn around and things are going to lift off again. Uh, since uh, you weren't around before Safe Moon Joe, I'm going to give you this question and we'll just go around the circle. The craziest thing about the market is how wild it is. It could turn green and go good tomorrow it could it could be red for months and we have zero idea uh i mean obviously there's multiple factors there's that silly little war happening right now which i mean we all want it to end either way i just want it to end uh, hopefully better than uh, obviously before uh and there's obviously the economy with our president who uh he's just he's just so stupid okay our president there's that there's so many things but ultimately i i think with the crypto market as it stands for itself the minute it does go into that green market it's gonna be aggressive into the green market just like right now in the red it's aggressive into the red market so just 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 the worse we see things i think when it flips back around the better it will be and the question is who is still around when that happens it's easier to sell right now and you know your, your investment you put a thousand take a hundred bucks on use that for whatever it's fine but like i do think that there's better merit and holding, I think there's better merit in holding a project you believe in, and even more so holding until when it, when we hit have the green market. It might not come today, it might not come tomorrow, but inevitably when it does come, I do think that's like really important. So yeah, awesome. Generation Crypto, when will you? Uh, when will the crypto market turn bullish? Just your opinion. Obviously, we cannot predict the future. If we could, we'd all be millionaires and we wouldn't be here on YouTube. We'd be on the in the Cayman Islands with Moon Boy with ladies fanning and soft with giant leaves. But unfortunately, we're all in our separate homes right now, uh, talking on YouTube. But if you could predict the future, what would be your opinion on when the crypto market will turn bullish? The, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, if I could predict that, I'd be rich, right? But uh, <laughs> going off of just my speculation on that, um, I personally, and this might upset a lot of people, but I don't see a lot of catalysts in the short term right now. Uh, like we talked about, there's the uh, the crisis going on with the wars that are going on in Eastern Europe. We also have the fact that the economy in the United States is looking to become even worse as we move into the fall. There's talks of basically food shortages as a result of the war that we've had and the fact that Fertilizer was more expensive during the planting season. Therefore, farmers were either having to spend a lot more money to either plant the same amount or were planting less to accommodate for those increases in prices as fertilizer was up over 400% uh, during that time frame. Um, so we've got a lot of things that are going to start impacting the markets as we move into the fall and especially as we move into the winter. So on top of the kind of economic crisis, the massive inflation, the war that's going on, there's a lot of fear that's going on just in general when it comes to economics. And it's not specific to cryptocurrency, uh, but cryptocurrency definitely gets impacted by those kind of outlooks. So I don't see any signs as of right now for anything to turn bullish right now um, in, in the short term. So the thing I can see that's, I guess, closest in the future that seems to be an indicator for a bullish market would be the next happening of Bitcoin which typically tends to lead towards more of a bullish run. And that doesn't happen till 2024. So to me, that's the earliest sign of more of a traditionally uh, big indicator of a bull market. But as for right now, I see no others that I'm aware of 
uh, other markers that would lead towards a bullish run anytime between now and then, which is very unfortunate. Um, but just because there's not a bull cycle going on right now does not mean that money can't be made or that moves can be made to set yourself up for um, basically maximizing your gains in the future with cryptocurrency. So it doesn't mean you got to walk away and that you're all done and that it's all sucks because a lot of the times what happens is during these bull runs, when people are DCAing, when they're accumulating, when they're making the right plays, when that cycle turns over, they're well positioned to benefit from that cycle rather than playing catch up as the rest of basically the people follow what the media says and then are trying to get in through FOMO. Great answer. Crypto Atlas, do you think it's going to turn around soon or or do you think we're still in a in a bear market for a while? And I, I uh, yeah, let me just get your opinion on that one. I think we're getting really close. And I think that within the next two weeks to a month and a half from now, we very well could see this um, really start to take off. I mean, you look at the pri the price drop from thirty four thousand mm -hmm. dollars down to thirty thousand dollars. You have critical levels where, from a psychological standpoint, people will start to get way more attention focused. Thirty thousand dollars. People are wondering, oh, if it goes below thirty thousand, is it just going to start mass selling all the way down to the next level where people think it could hit? 26,000, 24, 22,000. You hear those kinds of numbers, right? People are always wondering where the bottom is. People also have money off on the side. Moonboy, I know you're a perfect example. You got stable coin off on the side. You're waiting for that moment to make that big dive in, right? People are focusing a lot right now because, especially with Bitcoin, the fear and greed index, it shows they were at very historic lows. As mentioned earlier, Bitcoin has closed out seven weeks in a row in a row in the red how long is that going to happen until somebody says hmm what are the odds what is more probable that it's going to have another week it's going to be eight weeks now i mean you go and you look at the bitcoin charts uh i don't know if there's actually ever been since the inception of bitcoin seven weeks consecutively in the row of red even if people are trying to make a little bit of profit which let's be real when you got a market that's as bad as it is right now People are looking for any avenue that they can to try and make a profit, even if that comes down to blue chips. They're just trying to make a gain. They're trying to make some sort of a profit. You see people like Meet Kevin, who's had times where he's talked about in his videos before, where he's like, you know, hey, you see the things that are going down, but you don't got a lot of money to spend. Well, sometimes you just put a little bit of money in just so you can help dollar cost average a little bit, just so that you feel like you can get a little bit of that sense of winning. And so in the next two weeks, we could see a breakout from that seven week downtrend of Bitcoin. And a lot of things typically follow. It's not always correlated, right? Bitcoin is a non correlated asset when you look at things like the stock market, the SP 500, you look at the oil industry. There are times where you can see some similarities in them, but it's not always one for one in those regards. Same thing with crypto. When you look at some of the projects that have massively dropped, Luna, for example, a lot of people started diving in, trying to buy up that bottom because there's just trying to find something right now that can give you something of a profit. Bitcoin starts to make a rally going back up. What do you think is going to happen to a lot of the altcoins? Ethereum is probably going to follow Bitcoin. A lot of the projects follow Ethereum from the altcoin model. And a month from that, and I'm sorry, in a month and a half from now, we're going to be ending the second quarter going into the third quarter we very well could find out some other major institutions publicly disclosing how much of their holdings that they have acquired recently especially during the last six months of buying bitcoin and then why did bitcoin drop from thirty four thousand dollars down to thirty thousand dollars one of the major catalysts was because of the luna foundation they had sold approximately seventy thousand bitcoin and I saw comments on social media where people are like, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that they sold off like 70,000 Bitcoin and it only dropped this amount? It only dropped like $4,000 on the price? Guys, like how many companies, how many people out there have that much Bitcoin readily available to where they could cause a dramatic impact like that? You look at the statistics, most of the statistics are saying people are pulling their Bitcoin off of the centralized exchanges. They're sitting in reserves. The amount of wallets they're holding one Bitcoin independently is going up. So the amount of selling pressure from an individual entity that could just start crashing everything, the whale, and everyone starts to FOMO or, or FUD, you know, essentially following those foot tracks, I should say, it's going down. The adoption, more people readily and available, readily available 
sorry, I can't speak right now. They can <laughs> readily be available to buy crypto in different countries. We see this going up as there's more exchanges, there's more decentralized avenues for that. More people are taking the risk of getting involved mm -hmm. in crypto and and they never did it before. So I would not be surprised if in the next two weeks to month and a half from now that we finally see this year starting to push back into that rally. That's my opinion. Nice, nice opinion. Moon Boy, how about you? What do you think is going to be soon, later, five years, 10 years, five weeks, five seconds? When is this thing going to take off again? Right now. <laughs> so um, I think the next hopping is going to be 710 days away, which is 2024. Um, so, well, the, the next bull run, that's the next Bitcoin halving, which is going to be the beginning of 2024. So if you look at the historic charts of Bitcoin, crypto is always pumped when Bitcoin has its halving. Uh, first one was, was 2012. Next one was 2016. Next one was 2020. And every single time after the halving came a bull run. So historically, why would we pump in this environment? Now, there is a little outlier, which is Ethereum. So Ethereum is working on their Ethereum 2.0, which is delayed once again, scheduled for about July at this point. But people are anticipating an Ethereum bull run that's going to break away from the Bitcoin cycle because due to the hype of Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum being the second largest cryptocurrency in the world, and due to how Ethereum 2.0 is going to function. So with Ethereum 2.0, all the Ethereum gas fees, you know, when we're in MetaMask and we're trying to claim our strong tokens, we have to pay all the gas fee. With Ethereum 2.0, portions of that will now go towards directly towards burn which makes Ethereum a deflationary token. And that's going to be a good hedge against inflation, which is eating away at our money and our savings. So I see a lot of people most likely putting their money in Ethereum now that when Ethereum 2.0 launches and it's a fully decentral, um, it, 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 a full asset that's um, the um, inflationary is going to go up in value uh, versus going down. I think it might be possible for it to break away from Bitcoin needing to pump because people are going to look at it as a good hedge against inflation um, it's trusted. It's been in the market for almost a decade at this point. And when it comes to just, you know, money, where are you going to put your money for the very long term? Ethereum is a very good use case. I know for Ethereum 2.0, they're talking about upwards of 10% APY, which 10% in a traditional banking market is incredibly high. So big money, billionaires, hedge funds, institutions, I think they'll be interested in what Ethereum has to offer once Ethereum 2.0 pops off. So if it does pop off this year, who knows? They keep delaying it. Every single time the launch date comes. But if they do launch, which I believe now is July of this year, then that could be the catalyst for an altcoin bull run um, without the need of Bitcoin having to do anything. I feel like since Ethereum has been pushed back so far, it, it, it's almost build up the hype, almost like the safe moon products in a sense. It's been pushed back so far. It's like mine, like everybody has anxiety for when something launches, right? Same thing with Ethereum 2.0. The anxiety is high. The hype is high. But people just want to see it on the market because with Ethereum 2.0 comes so many things that has been worked on for the better part of the last three years to push Ethereum further. So I feel like we can see a separate bull run if Ethereum can pull Ethereum 2.0 off. If not, I think 2024 is when we're going to have to wait for a traditional bull run where everything goes up following Bitcoin. Wow. Wow. You guys are killing it. Killing it with these answers, man. I, I hope everyone watching is taking notes to all this non-financial advice. Um, all right. Here is more non-financial advice, but it's your best passive income plays. What do you think is the best way, just in your opinion, you know, it's not financial advice once again, but what do you feel is the best way to earn a passive income in this DeFi space? Is it reflectionary tokens, stakings, no, uh, staking nodes? What do you feel is the best way to actually earn in this current market? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Generation Crypto. We're going to start off with you with this question. Uh, thank you. Um, I think you have to take the market conditions into consideration. So a lot of people will probably be upset with me when I say this, but reflectionary tokens are probably one of the worst passive income plays you can make in a bear market when there's low volume going on, just because there's low trading volume and your entire reflection based model is dictated upon the volume that you're receiving. Whereas a lot of these other kind of models that are developed like staking or nodes don't necessarily require volume. They just basically just need you to not have massive sell pressure. Again, there's a lot of sell pressure in a red market. Um, so I think that there's issues or rather concerns that come up with each one of these different models. At the end of the day, you need to find the specific projects 
that you believe are going to have long-term utility and value. And they're not just built upon, as Moonboy likes to point out, these kind of Ponzi, Ponzi nomics or gamification where it's all reliance on you kind of putting back into the system. But there's going to be some utility in its future or currently in order to carry that through this cycle so it can survive into the next uh, bull run. We've seen a lot of projects historically over crypto that have a great community. They've got support, but they never provide utility. Their bear market eventually just destroys the project. They either run out of liquidity or they just the community eventually gives up on it and moves on to something else um, over time. So uh, I know I gave a very long answer to that. But right now, as far as passive income plays that I'm involved in, um, personally, I'm really big on Giddy right now. Uh, they have a staking platform that is currently available. And of course, that is going to become more publicly available in the next couple of months when their full app launches. So if you get on that wait list uh, within the first 20,000 people, you're also going to get a free NFT. And the NFT will have perks in apps such as free gas fees when you're going ahead and staking in their platform. So if you want to help Tim out, he's got a QR code up there in the top corner. You can go ahead and use that to get on the wait list. Or if you feel generous and want to use mine, of course, you can go to my channel and use mine as well. But um that's kind of where I stand as far as a passive income place for the future. And of course I do enjoy drip quite a bit. I think they've got a lot of utility and uh, that has been good for me this year. It's been my best place so far this year. Of course, like we said, not financial advice, I'm not selling them to buy or sell, just telling people to go out and do their own research on any project they talk about. Awesome. Thank you so much for that giddy shout out. Also, my link is in the description below. If you don't want to use the QR code, you can always click on that link. But guys, um, I guess the next one is Safe Moon Joe. What is your strategy for making income in this uh, bloody market, if you will? Um, what do you like? Do you like reflectionary tokens? Do you like staking? Do you like nodes? And and my question to you is: uh, do, do are you making good money in this market, or are you just kind of like flying by? No, <laughs> <laughs> James is simply no. Uh, you know, there's so many uh, different ways to get involved and. Obviously, uh, you know, finding out about tokens, especially like new tokens, is a cool way to get involved. You get an early, they have immediate pump, and then you can sell afterwards. And a lot of people do that. Um, but to be honest with you, the main thing is just to hold. That's what I've been doing. I just hold everything. I'll buy and hold. And um, and then, you know, like like much before, like Drip's a great play. I think Drip's a great token to get ready and set up for. Even now when no one's caring about it, no one's looking at it, I still think it's a great token to get involved in because – of the whole system at play. Uh, safe food looks pretty good. Uh, I'll be honest with you, even though I'm not crazy about the CEO and some of the things he said, I do think safe was pretty interesting. I, you know, it, it, the question becomes if it's going to be a long lasting or not, but uh, when you buy into these, you ideally want them to be long lasting. Uh, and of course, Giddy, Giddy looks really good as well. I, I was actually, so Giddy's on exchange called BKEX. And uh, I just found that out. I'm like looking into it right now, but that's I'm just learning it right now as we're talking right here. But Giddy's also a really interesting uh, thing to get behind as well. So there's a lot of different plays and a lot of different tokens out there. And I think that the more diversified, get a decent bag in every one, focus on each one at a time, get a decent setup on each one, and then move on to the next one. I think that's like the smartest thing to do. Um, obviously, if they're on the red, you're not doing well value wise, but it doesn't really matter if you're set up with them. So at time, everything goes back into the into, to the you know market. The market goes into the green, uh, the next bull run, what what have you. You'll be set up nice in each one of these. So let's say all of them fail except one. It doesn't matter, does it? Because if it does well, you're going to make value off that. So I think diversifying is definitely is the best way to do it. Wow, great answer. Um. I'll go with my answer on this particular one, just because I really haven't been answering these. I've been letting you guys deliver all these amazing, awesome answers. Uh, my best in passive income play in this market is to just stake USDC and make money on that. So if the market is going down, then that's fine. And if it starts going up, I can always unstake my USDC and then buy back in. Um, so while I'm holding it, I'm making a small amount of money and I just keep putting that back in. And uh, that's how I'm making it through this market. I'm not making a ton of money, so I'm not rolling in it, obviously. But uh, I think the safest way that I'm navigating through this is finding a staking project that I could stake USDC, um, earn some money on that, and then just keep recompounding that. So that's my best play in this market, not financial advice. Uh, let's fly on over to Moonboy. What is your best uh, way of making it, making a... Blah, blah, blah. Your best passive income play in this market, uh, reflectionary token staking nodes. What what are you uh, what are you feeling right now? 
You know, yeah. So kind of, kind of what Generation said, um, when it comes to tokens that require volume, like the reflection tokens, they need volume. There's no volume in the red market. So those are essentially dead when it comes to earning money. Um, they can perform very, very well. You know, when you catch them low and volume goes to the tens of millions, but in this environment, no one is really pulling those kind of volumes. That's a reflection token. So reflection tokens aren't making anyone any money right now. Uh, Nodes, sell pressure is incredibly high. So the I, I, I follow a bunch of Node people on Twitter and I saw them about maybe two or three months ago. I'm making 10K a week. I'm making 10K a day. Now that like, you know, I'm not making anything. I'm making like 100 bucks. So, I, you know, that's also dead. I think staking is interesting because staking, you know, you can stake a variety of different tokens, Cardano, Ethereum, Zilliqa. Uh, but the, the percent you earn, 5%, 6%, 14%, is not enough to cause a dent when it comes to earnings per day. So that also is not it. For me, what I like is liquidity farming. And I found that to be very, very well. I, um, I'm in the drip garden, which is pretty much what LP farming is. You contribute your tokens. You get LP tokens, um, drip. BUSD paired LP tokens, which if you want to claim or compound, you can do either. I'm in the process of claiming those because I do want to claim them to put them into the animal farm to acquire pigs token, which I can either add back into the pig pen to earn more profit or I can sell on the open market. Um, but, you know, I'm doing a little bit of that. I do have some profit in pancake swap and I'm doing a little bit of liquidity farming over there. And liquidity farming is very high risk. But when the price of everything is already tanked so much, you know, there's not much sell pressure well maybe bitcoin goes down more right i don't know how low bitcoin is going to go but everything is pretty much on sale so the pancake token which is at six bucks per token if it stays there my value that i have paired up in my lpb usd pool is going to stay pretty steady right even if it does drop a little bit due to the pancake volatility i'm earning profit on an everyday basis that i can kind of offset some of that because i'm earning money that's going to help my losses so i do like liquidity farming for the bearish period uh, staking is, I think, somewhat safe. Um, if you have enough position market share in a token, then that could be a good allocation to you, depending on the APY per year. Um, I tend to look for 18% plus for it to be even worth it. I don't think a 5% APY staking Cardano is going to help anyone anytime soon. Um, so, yeah, um, I would say liquidity farming for me and staking would be number two. Good place, good place. Crypto Atlas, you're up to bat with this question. Your best income plays. So staking is, income. yeah. Sorry. I feel staking is basically the best overall concept to point out with this. Uh, the baseline of it is compounding during a bear market where everything is down. Those are not the times when realistically you try and take profits, right? You wait until it's in a bull run when things are going well. A lot of the things that are going on right now, especially when you look at, let's say, node projects, is uh, there's uncertainty that's going on in the market. We don't know which of these node projects are actually going to survive this. A lot of them, there's just so much selling pressure that that alone makes it look like the project's about to collapse. Other ones, people just gave up on their project from a developmental standpoint. The team behind it, they're like, you know what, we're done. And they rug pull it, whatever, right? But we're in a space where this space is moving so fast, the innovators are coming out almost every day. We're seeing new design mechanisms, consensus models, et cetera. And we're still very, very much in an experimental phase where we don't know what the next big thing that everyone's going to really jump on is going to be. We keep seeing new things coming out at a very hyper accelerated pace. And because of how much money is now flowing into this market, you're seeing a lot of also developers coming in that are saying, hmm, let me see what I can create, right? And there's tools, resources out there. A lot of this stuff makes it very simplified as compared to, let's say, you're trying to do this stuff 10 years ago. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of those things really playing out. But when you look at it from a standpoint where we are right now, as has already been stated, reflectionary tokens, when there's no volume, that doesn't really work. No tokens, you're getting a bunch of tokens, but people just immediately go sell those things. The best case scenario is a hybrid. So if we weren't talking about fusing multiple things together, I would say the idea of allowing staking, as long as you can readily access it. So if you are still trying to take some kind of a profit, when you do a compounding mechanism, a lot of these projects, just as an example, we're talking about drip, right? You can compound it. And then you have an interest that you're earning, you can access that interest. So every day that you decide to not take a profit, you're increasing the number of tokens by you compounding and not just with drip, but any kind of design system with this. Anytime you compound, anytime you stake, that is not adding to sell pressure. 
right? So that creates an opportunity for buying pressure to come in, which raises the price. If nobody sells, but there's activity that's going on and it's buying price goes up. So then that's where you can then evaluate where you start to take profits. So it's not all a one-sided thing where everybody says, sell, 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 sell. You create a design model where it diversifies independently for individuals. Some people will keep compounding. Some people will take profits every day. Some people will take profits once a week. But that allows a bit of a shift in its natural design. Uh, so I would say that during a market like this, if you need to take profits, create a design system where you relieve a little bit of that selling pressure. And I think the most simplified version is essentially a staking auto compounding or compounding certain design. Wow. Fantastic. All right, guys, I'm going to ask everyone just a really quick question. Just yes or no. Do you have the ability to receive a Polygon token? Moonboy, yes or no? Uh, yes. How about you, Crypto Atlas? Sorry, repeat the question one more time. Do you have the ability to receive a Polygon token, yes or no? Yeah. I just okay. have to, uh, just Polygon wallet, right? Yeah. I was just yeah. wondering. How about okay. you, Safe Moon Joe? Do you have the ability to... Okay, you can get a Polygon mm -hmm. token. And yes, obviously, I, I already know the answer to this from uh, Generation Crypto. Cool. That's cool, 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 cool. Um, because we are going to play a game. And the winner of the game gets 25 free giddy. Woo! So you guys get to get giddy. This is this time I'm actually giving re giving away All rewards, right. guys. So um, wow. yeah. So here's another thing. This is gonna be a good time because uh, basically the way that this game works is is it re a real DeFi project? I'm going to give you some names. You have to tell me if you think it's real or if it's fake. And whoever gets the most right will get themselves 25 giddy tokens. Um, all right. Yeehaw, let's go. First, we're going to start off with Safe Moon Joe. The very Shit. first one is Scum Bucket. Is Scum Bucket a real <laughs> DeFi project? Yes or no? No. Okay, so you are saying that it is not a real DeFi project. No. Okay. Um, Scum Bucket Generation Crypto, real or not? Uh, I'm going to go, yeah. Okay. Is. Okay. Um, <laughs> Atlas, Scumbucket, real project or not? Not. Okay. So you think it's it's not a real real project. Okay. Okay. And uh, Moonboy, Scumbucket. So I know um, C-U-M Bucket, that's a real project, but <laughs> Scum, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Um, guys, no looking this up. So if you're at, don't, don't look any I'm of these at, up. I'm adding Polygon to my, to my MetaMask. I swear oh, to God. Okay. 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 Don't, don't, don't look any of that. Oh, so you were feeling confident. He's yeah. Win. He's feeling confident. He's going to win this one. All no, right, no, no. So I have no idea. Just... Is this a real DeFi project? Cheese fry. And we're going to start with Safe Moon Joe. Cheese fry. Is it a real DeFi project? No. Okay, so you say no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, Drew, is this a real DeFi project? I'm going to go with no on this one as well. Okay, so you're going to go with no as well. Okay. Um, Atlas, is this a real DeFi project? No. Okay, so you're saying no as well. And Moonboy, is Cheese Fry a real DeFi project? Yes, it is. Okay. Ooh, okay. the odd man out on this one, huh? Yeah, you guys, you guys are wrong. <laughs> you guys are no DeFi. Uh, Come on. <laughs> BNB Beer. BN Beer. BN Beer. Uh, is that a real DeFi project? Uh, Safe Moon Show. BN Beer. Sure. Yeah, no, that sounds, like, <laughs> sounds legit yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a token to me. So you think that is BN Beer, okay? And Crypto Atlas, <laughs> BN Beer, is this a real one? Yes or no? No. Okay. And Nick, or sorry, Moonboy, <laughs> is this a real? Uh, is this a real token? Uh, yes, being it here? is. Yes, okay. it is, sir. Yes, it is. All right. Well, that's a, that's what you think. Okay. Shoelace. I... <laughs> uh, Safe Moon Joe is Shoelace a DeFi project? Hold on, let me just <laughs> hold on. Let me search it on. I'm trying to think like how would you sell this to people? Like I feel like his wife. <laughs> is off on the outside right now on her phone and she's like hand signing to him googling shoelace uh 
No, it's not. It doesn't sound no. legit. Okay. You can't sell that, right? <laughs> you can't sell shoelace is what he's saying. Okay. You can't do it. <laughs> Generation Crypto, shoelace, is it a real project? Yes or no? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go yeah on this one. Okay, so you're going to say yes to this one. And Atlas, shoelace, is it a real DeFi project? No. Okay. And Moonboy, is it a real DeFi project? Shoelace. I'm doing the opposite of what ge- whatever generation says, so I'm not <laughs> whatever so you're, the opposite. So you're saying okay. no, no because of what you're saying it is. I'm saying no, it's not. Shoelace to the moon. <laughs> Shoelace to the moon. You guys are crazy. How'd you buy your mansion? Oh, I bought this crypto project called Shoelace. <laughs> look, at, look at your shoes. That's okay. where it is. What are those? Next project, <laughs> Waffle Swap. Joe. So- Waffle Swap, is it a real DeFi project? Yes. Okay. Confident. Yeah, Confident. yes on that one as well. There's a pancake swap. Someone's definitely trying to make a waffle swap. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kyle, is there a waffle swap? Atlas? Or, or sorry, or Atlas. Sorry. Oh, Jesus. I got to. Yes. I'll say yes on this one. Okay. So so you're saying yes to this one. And Moonboy. Generation said yes, but I'm going to go with no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Come you on. just wait till you're at the end and you have zero because I'm all right. <laughs> I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm going to win. <laughs> all right. Uh, next DeFi project. Is it real? Milk and butter. Joe, is milk mm-hmm. and butter a real DeFi project? Not feeling. It's not, it's not good like waffles. <laughs> yeah, not no, feeling I'm telling you. this one as well. <laughs> so you're saying no to this immediately? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Shotgunning it. Um, Atlas, milk and butter, real DeFi project. I'll say yes on this one. Okay. Okay. Um, and Moonboy, milk and butter. <laughs> well, you gotta um, say yes. <laughs> damn it. That, that sounds um. <laughs> milk and butter. I'm gonna keep it, man. I'm gonna go yes. I'm just keep okay. the trend going. So. Okay. Uh, you know what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> sounds horrible. Um. Okay. Frank and beans. Frank and beans. Is it a real DeFi project? Safe Moon Joe. Frank and beans. No. So you're saying no. you're saying I'm it's saying not no. saying it's not all okay. Right. Here's what I'm thinking. All right, I'm gonna say yes, but I'm gonna give an explanation. Shit. I think right. you saw I Frank and Beans, and you're like, I need to find a counter one to add this list. So what's another like super old person food? And you're like, I'm gonna think of a uh, <laughs> milk and bread or whatever that last time. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Can't change my answer. No, 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 no. That's my both answer. Wrong. Yes. <laughs> so you're saying your answer is yes. Okay, yeah. Atlas. Is Frank and Beans a DeFi project? No. <laughs> okay, you're, you're saying no to this one. Okay. Um, and Moonboy, I guess, is Frank and Beans a DeFi project? I'm going to have to break it. I'm going to have to say yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, figured, <laughs> I broke him. I couldn't, I couldn't keep it. I broke him on oh, that one. You broke oh, him on me. that one. Okay. <laughs> Next, is it real? Fishy Tank Token. So <laughs> Safe Moon Joe, is Fishy Tank Token a real token? Fishy tank token. No. So you're saying <laughs> no. Okay. Wait. Um, yeah, no. I'm still going no. Definitely no. Definitely no. Drew, fishy uh, tank token. I'm, I'm going to go is no it, on this one. You're going to go no on this one. Okay. Atlas, fishy tank token. No. Okay. So you're also saying no. And Moonboy, fishy tank token. I got to say no. That sounds horrible. So. But but I thought you were going to do the opposite of... of it, uh, it, it sounded too bad, and I think I'm going to lose. I can't keep... His will is broken. His will is broken. broken. <laughs> I'm going to lose okay. this thing if I keep agreeing all these points. <laughs> okay. Um, the next, is it real? Unicorn milk. Um, <laughs> say moon oh, milk. God. That it's sounds, unicorn that milk. That sounds so legit. Yeah, I'm going with unicorn okay. milk. <laughs> okay. Drew it is sounds, unicorn. Sounds good. No, it's it's not real. There's no way that's real. <laughs> okay. Atlas. If that's real corn to the moon. You're saying unicorns aren't real? <laughs> Atlas, is unicorn milk a real DeFi project? I'll say no. Okay. <laughs> and Moon Boy, is unicorn milk a real DeFi project? I'm gonna say yeah. Okay, you're gonna say unicorn yes. economics. <laughs> okay, stick. and Roll this is back. the Come final on. one. Is this a real DeFi project? Red Rocket, um, Safe Moon Joe, Red Rocket. Is it a real DeFi project? Yes, 
Okay, so you're saying it's that sounds yes. legit gonna, to me. Yeah, that that one sounds more like it would be. So I'm gonna go yeah on that one. A red rocket? Do you guys know what a red rocket is? I know what a red rocket <laughs> is. Yeah. Okay. That's why I think it's definitely gonna be one. It's a red rocket okay. plane. Atlas is a red rocket a real DeFi project? I'll say yes. Okay. And Moonboy is red rocket a real DeFi project? So yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. So you're saying yes on that? Yes, sir. Okay, now I have the winner. Drum roll. The winner of today is Moonboy. You win what? 25 oh, gifts. Good night, generation. What I told you. You, you got <laughs> six you correct. It's because you deviated. Generation is yeah, always why. wrong. Just do everything. <laughs> do the opposite of what he does. Scumbucket <laughs> is not a real project. So Scumbucket is not a real project. Dang. Cheese fry is a real DeFi project. Get right generation. Come BN, on. <laughs> BN Beer is a real project. Shoelace is not a real DeFi project. Waffle Damn. Swap is not real, guys. I made Damn. that shit up. It was not real. But it sounds like said, pancake. <laughs> I know. I got you. That was not real. I know milk, French toast. Milk and butter is a real DeFi project, guys. Wow. I just, I you, didn't every single one of you guys got that wrong. Uh, milk oh, and butter. Wait, 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 wait. You said you, milk you, and butter you, is I real? Just, milk and butter is, is a real DeFi I project. I said that was real. Dude, imagine being part of that Oh, no, okay. Well, you, you are actually, I, I do have your point for that. You actually came in third. Drew came in dead oh, last. Man. Yes. Like, maybe that made me win. <laughs> I got second? Bro. <laughs> Close. <laughs> hey, it's just revenge because uh, the first time I won and Moonboy got last, so I guess we're just sat on opposite. Yeah, day. bro. Frank, <laughs> Frank and Beans, you guys liked it, but it was not real, man. It was oh. a fake Frank and Beans. That was, was good. That was a good one. That was a good one. Wait, so I uh, got that one too. Did I? Wait, did I get huh? that one wrong? You didn't get that one. I said no on that one. Yeah, no, you got that one right. You got that one right. Well, Atlas. I keep getting it right, but I didn't win. I got third. No, what the third, heck? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you got you got four right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe got five, Moonboy got six, Ooh. and Drew got two. Woo! Oh, no, you were two, close. baby. Red Bro, I was coming yeah. behind you, and no. <laughs> um, <laughs> with my strategy, I go against generation with everything. Fishy <laughs> tank token is actually real. So, in case anyone wants to get involved with fishy tank, that is actually Sounds a real DeFi project. I'll unicorn. buy it tonight. <laughs> unicorn milk is a real DeFi project. <laughs> Oh, I knew it. And Red Rocket is not a real DeFi project. I made that shit up. Wow. <laughs> so, I got a lot of them wrong. All right. So after this show, we'll have to, that. you just have to post in that. Giddy. That's you got cool. your, you're finally getting into <laughs> yeah, Giddy. Yeah. Um, if you guys are watching and not in on the Giddy waitlist app, scan the QR code in the corner and get on that Giddy waitlist app. Um, okay, That's now right. let's get on to the next thing. And I think this is, it might be a cool question for you guys. Um, what is your favorite wallet app and why? So what wallet app is your favorite one? Which one do you like using the most out of all the different uh, DeFi wallets out there? And why do you like that one the most? Uh, Safe Moon Joe, I think I might know your answer, but maybe maybe I don't know. Safe Moon Joe, what's uh, your you know, favorite wallet a, app? The Safe Moon Wallet. It's, it's, I'll be honest, I like Trust Wallet. I like um, MetaMask. I, I like them a lot. Uh, I'm just used to saving wallet because I've been using it so much, so I use it for like everything. So that's basically what it is. I, I still have the other one. I still use the other ones, but like for everything, I literally my first instinct is how can I make this work with the saving wallet, <laughs> and can it do that? And then if it does it, I go cool. I'm done with it. I don't need to like expand on that. I'm good then. But uh, I mean, they're, they're, like I said, trust wallet, MetaMaster, great wallet. It's just, just yeah, I, I find myself being more comfortable using the saving wallet app. Very very cool. Generation, yeah. what is your favorite wallet app and why? Right now, it's MetaMask. Um, it's the most widely accessible for anything that I'm getting involved with on any chain. Um, so it's just easy to use. It's intuitive, and it doesn't have the security issues that Trust Wallet has. So it's probably my favorite. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Crypto Atlas, favorite <laughs> wallet app and why? Right now, I'd say Trust Wallet. I like the ability that if I need to do a quick wallet connect, um, I can not only just do that inside the app itself but it has a disconnect feature there's an update that they did recently so i can actually see inside of the app where i'm connected with what project and because i don't invest in just one project i do invest into a lot of different things i do a lot of these node projects i do check in i compound etc uh being able to quickly get in 
and then quickly be able to disconnect mm -hmm. in that and to see if I am still connected. I really like that feature. Awesome. Moon Boy, what is your favorite wallet app and why? So mine is CEX.io. And the reason why is because it's very easy to on. Not a real coin. Off. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very cool app. Um, you know, for me, like I said, you can trade your cryptocurrencies in there. You can buy Bitcoin. Um, I use it for the purpose of off ramping my crypto to fiat directly to my bank account it takes about, you know, eight to nine hours. Um, so it, you due to where I live is very hard to buy crypto. Um, Binance is blocked. Crypto.com is blocked. KuCoin is blocked. A lot of these exchanges that are available to people around the world are blocked. Um, CEX has been a very easy place for me to purchase crypto. And from there, I can send that crypto to either a MetaMask or Binance to purchase other assets. When I'm ready to take my profits, I can easily send it back to that uh, crypto wallet. And then I can offer up into my debit card directly. So uh, for just quality of life purposes, I, I, I don't stake in there. I don't do Wallet Connect. Um, that's MetaMask for me, but when it comes to just what's helped me in my life more when it comes to investing and taking profits, CX.io. Awesome. Um, my vote is for MetaMask. Uh, I love, I'm all over a whole bunch of different chains and it makes it so easy when you're jumping from chain to chain. Um, so that's one of my favorite wallets because and a lot of the other wallets I find a little bit more confusing on trying to add different networks and stuff to them. Uh, I, I got the hand, uh, of how to do it on MetaMask. And it's really simple. And if I'm going from AVAX to Polygon to BNB to Ethereum, to it's like, it's so easy to move around. And that's why I'm a big fan of MetaMask wallet. So guys, you guys did a great job on the show. I have one last question for everyone. And this is just to help people out that are watching that are new to DeFi and may not know all the intricacies of the DeFi uh, what are some things that you would recommend people not do when they're investing in DeFi? What are some things to watch out for? What are some things you should should look out for in this DeFi space? SafeMoon Joe, um, besides SafeMoon Cash, which was up 12% the other day, by the way. Jesus. <laughs> they're coming back strong. They're gonna, I, I feel like SafeMoon's going to moon and SafeMoon Cash will still be like, it's a dollar. Like, <laughs> it's who's working at Project? <laughs> Joe, you, you have no idea the amount of people that found out that project because of you like oh a lot of people oh, i bought it straight up because safe moon joe told me it was you gonna rock no i didn't now no. watch this now it's gonna be bigger than safe moon and it's gonna be all attributed to it's, joe it's gonna have like a random dev team and joe, then, and then we're gonna have to take over the contract and run it's the gonna have a, it's gonna have a random dev team and spoiler i'm gonna be the head guy in the dev team because i know we're in docs myself <laughs> <laughs> it was me all along i was safe moon cash <laughs> for all purposes safe moon cash did rug the all the development team left they actually started another project it's called like game game cash or something to that uh so there is no more safe moon cash they don't have a website they don't have any support uh but for some reason the price did go up the other day and i'm holding a whole seven cents it went back down a little bit it went up to nine cents uh my Woo! whole five dollar investment thanks joe for that um, no. <laughs> um but yeah so so what are some things not to do uh when investing in DeFi? Is it me? Yeah. Oh. Um, don't, 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 don't ever, ever listen to anybody and everybody. Uh, learn from everybody and then figure it out on your own. And I think that's what is really important, just crypto in general. Like, if everyone says something, whatever it's for or against, no matter what it is, go and learn yourself after taking i mean there's always it's always great to take everyone's word of consideration it's always good like that but after absorbing every what everyone tells you turn around and say okay now i know what they say now let me go figure out uh if it correlates or how this works and and do that you'll learn more about the projects and crypto but more importantly um you'll learn from getting everyone's opinion what's to expect of whatever x or y and i think that's insanely important is to listen to everybody try try to ha have as many people talking to you about whatever as possible but then come back and learn it yourself and i think that's the most important lesson that that i definitely wish i learned a uh, long time ago like super long time ago like within crypto is to not just have hear family say oh she sell it and then go all right mom says she sells so i'm gonna sell it or, or everyone at your job making funny about it just absorb what they say and go and learn about it and then figure out what you want to do afterwards Awesome. Awesome answer. Uh, Generation Crypto, um, things not to do when investing in DeFi. 
Um, I think the first and most obvious is to not share your seed phrase, right? There's a lot of times yeah. where you'll be on Twitter, you'll be on Reddit, you'll be on another platform, YouTube, and someone will say, hey, I'm support. I heard you had problems with our project, whether it's a token or you're on a wallet and they say we're wallet support, we're reaching out to you. Um, any of those kind of things that way, uh, they're all usually scams. None of these dev teams are reaching out to you. They don't have support teams on staff to reach out to everybody, especially these wallet apps. So you never, regardless of circumstance, should you ever, <laughs> you're <gonna call> be, <laughs> uh, <laughs> should you ever be giving out that seed phrase to anybody ever? There's literally never a time or an excuse that you would ever have to give to a support team or to anybody else, your 12 word seed phrase, never share it with anybody. Um, hopefully this is something that will be kind of resolved in DeFi as it grows, not to keep shilling it, but Giddy is working on ways to make seed phrases more secure so that it becomes less of an issue down the road, especially for the people that are new to crypto. But as the time stands now, um, when it comes to things like seed phrases, please protect it at all costs because the second you give that out, that's just license for anyone else to completely zero out your bags and there's really no way of getting that money back once it's gone. Um, so please, please, please protect that seed phrase at all costs. Don't keep a digital copy on your phone or in your photos or anywhere where it can be digitally accessed. Keep the analog written on a piece of paper, print it out on a piece of paper, whatever you have to do, but don't save it digitally anywhere and then keep that stored somewhere safe where other people are not going to see it. Uh, I'm going to go next really quick just because this popped in my head when you were talking about not giving out seed phrases. Also, do not connect uh, with your wallet connect to a QR code that you're not familiar with and you verify the website. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of websites that will look like other websites that you think are legit. Like PancakeSwap has a lot of different websites that mimic the website almost perfect. Make sure you really read the uh, URL that you put in to make sure if you are really on the pancake swap because once you connect your wallet to that QR that pops up, if you do wallet connect on it and you and you use that little QR and you scan it in, um, not the QR code here, by the way, if you want to sign up for the Getty wait list app, you can scan that in and get the download the app for it. But don't connect your wallet to, yeah, that one right there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but don't connect your wallet to websites that you don't know 100% are legit because that will they have the ability to then go in and take everything in your wallet. It's almost as if you just gave them your seed phrase. So um, that's one of the things I would say um, things not to do when investing in DeFi is to just get onto a DEX you're not familiar with and just buy in that way because they could literally go in and steal everything you have. Um, all right, let's fly on over to Atlas. What are some things not to do when investing in DeFi? I got two big things. Number one is the golden rule of investing. Never invest more than what you're willing to lose. That's something we definitely need to make sure that we elaborate to people if they are getting involved in investing in general. That is the golden rule. Never invest more than you're willing to lose. The second thing is that there's been a scam that's happened quite a bit, especially when we're in a bull market where a lot of these scammers, they run live streams and it looks like as if it's a live broadcast of Elon Musk or it's Jeff Bezos, Vitalik Buterin, it's some other founder. I mean, for all we know, we could see one in the future that's of John Crony from SafeMoon. And they make it sound like they're doing this nice little giveaway where they're giving away uh, Bitcoin. And in these scams, what they lead you to believe is that if you send them Bitcoin, you will get 10 times that back. But you can only enter it in one time right so they give you options so they say oh you can do 0.1 bitcoin you could do one bitcoin or you could do 10 bitcoin but they're trying to be really generous right they're trying to give back to you so they make it sound like in order for you to receive in this giveaway and for you to only receive your one-time donation gift they need to have your address so you have to send them something but by you sending them a portion, their whole idea is like, hey, the more that you send us, the more that you can technically get back, but you only get one chance. So you get some people that look at it and they say, well, if I only do 0.1 Bitcoin and it is a scam, like I lost some money, but, you know, who knows? Maybe it works. Out. But you get a whole bunch of people that do that. These scammers end up making a ton of money. And then in addition to that, you get other people where they say like, holy cow, this looks so legit. Everything looks so it looks like there's a live stream feed on the screen. They make everything look very presentable and they're probably going to keep trying to advance these things. So don't be surprised if in the future they actually have the live stream chat enabled and you see 
people talking inside of these chats, those aren't actually people. Those are probably going to be botted things, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube or whatever. Um, those are scams. You send them 10 Bitcoin, you think you're going to get 100 back. No, they just took your Bitcoin. It's gone. You got screwed over. Wow. Thank you for that advice. I think if who's ever watching out there, put that, put that to heart. Also, do your own research for anything you're investing in. Make sure that you know what you're investing in. Don't just invest because someone tells you uh, because they could be telling you a load of BS. So make sure you look into it yourself. Moonboy, uh, what are some things not to do when investing in DeFi? Well, don't invest in new projects, especially something called Unicorn Milk. By the way, this is their <laughs> NFT game over here. So I love you can it. Actually, you can actually purchase the unicorns and race them and win milk tokens. So yeah, bro. that is over there. So are, are you, are you going to be investing in mil uh, unicorn milk now? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, so you can bet your, so it, it's an ERC 20 token and based off of it, how it is that if you purchase a horse, a unicorn, you can race it and you can actually buy other pieces of it to make it go faster. And the more races you win, the more unicorn milk you earn, which you can cash in for Ethereum. Why would I not buy that? Come on. That sounds like money. <laughs> That sounds yeah, like pure cash, man. I want to milk those <laughs> unicorns. Wait for a second. If it's a male unicorn, how do you milk it? Yeah, you, you, you're thinking too far. Are just there male it, unicorns? It doesn't matter what it is, just milk I don't it. Know. No, do do the corns don't exist. Female in the unicorn? <laughs> or are they like an androgynous species? Are they like a, a like a seahorse where They're the males like are the ones that give birth? Or, or like how does a unicorn work? They just all all lay eggs. They're just like frogs. They lay so eggs? Yeah. The horse lays <sighs> eggs? No, it's not a horse, it's a unicorn. Horses yeah, don't lay eggs. Different. Unicorn okay. is but different, a unicorn, bro. Unic okay. Unicorns <laughs> are like frogs, all right? All frogs lay eggs, right? So Chinese unicorn milk don't invest in. Is that your advice when not doing things in DeFi? So <laughs> I I feel like people always love to jump on the <laughs> people love to jump on the new brand new shiny toy, thinking that this is gonna be the token that's going to pump. I, when it comes to advice, just don't hop into anything and everything. Stop buying all these random pre-sale tokens. Um, when you see a funny name, like some kind of play on bait, like like a baby Seifu or like a baby Drip. I've seen all of them, and I've seen Baby Drip Junior, Seifu Senior, all of these tokens. <laughs> Why would you guys buy these little play on names of these other tokens that are popular? Obviously, this is going to rug you. You, you, you're out here buying Ethereum, dad, and mom. I've seen all these coins. It, it just blows, and they blow up tens of millions in market cap within the first week all the time because those communities are massive. For whatever reason, they think this is going to moon as well and give them the same 10x, if not more, of a return, and they're going to hop in, not realizing the LP is going to be unlocked in a day, and they're going to pull the liquidity out, which always happens. So... Stop chasing behind this little funny name of these bigger projects when they add like a junior or a senior or a baby or a mom or a dad. Ridiculous stuff, right? You don't invest that way. Um, you do what you do with your money, but it is the traditional way to guarantee a rug. So that's it. Baby grandpa. Awesome. awesome. You guys did a great job tonight. Thank you for joining me. That's all the material that I had tonight. So for you guys watching out there, thank you so much for watching us. Um, I don't know if you guys, do you guys want to do your little outros? I don't know if you guys enjoy doing that or we could just cut it. It's completely up to you. Do you guys, for a little raise of hands there if you want to do a little outro. Okay, I didn't see any hands. I'm not seeing any hands. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for joining us tonight and that's going to end the show uh, and uh, we'll see you in another week. So giddy up and scan that QR code or click the link below to get on the giddy waitlist wait list app uh, to get one of your free NFTs from Giddy. Um, and uh, yeah, look into the project. It's really cool. The people there are really cool. And I'm sure Moonboy is going to be a giddy head after this because I have to send him some giddy because he crushed that game. <laughs> so, Get all right, guys. Get <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>